So guys, Hell Let Loose Update 8 just came out and with over a thousand changes, it's by far the biggest update we've had to the game so far. And so basically in this video, what we're going to do is break down almost all the things you're definitely going to want to know about and maybe some of the things you've missed as well. So guys, this is Billy Eat World again and let's find out. All right, guys, how you going? Welcome to the video. And as you can see, we're doing something different today. I'm going to try and actually do this video live, uh, which is something I've never really done before. Um, that's actually because I've just starting started streaming recently. You might not actually realize that. Uh, this is the stream setup. Um, so I figure, you know, why not use it to make some videos as well? Uh, by the way, have a look on that side of the screen. Uh, there's all the links for the Twitch and the YouTube channels and all of those sort of things if you want to catch the stream when I actually do go live. Um, but like I said, today we're going to be looking at these patch notes live and I'm going to try and give you my opinion on uh, how it's sort of affecting the meta of the game. Also, another thing as well, uh, thanks to the Hell Let Loose devs, we actually have two codes to give away uh, with this video. So if you want a chance to win one of those codes, all you have to do is, number one, leave a comment on this video and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. There'll be one code for that. And secondly, if you head over to my Twitch channel uh, and you follow... Uh, there's some information there if you just type in uh, exclamation mark giveaways into the chat and you should get some info. As always though, I'll put all the info in the description uh, and you can figure out how to enter there. But anyway, let's have a look at the patch notes. Like I said, we're gonna just take a look at the patch notes because there's a thousand changes in this patch, guys. It is literally, like objectively, the biggest update we've had in this game so far. So there's a lot to cover. I didn't want to script all of this out because I just want to give you guys my my raw first impressions of how it felt in game. Um, and obviously a lot of these changes aren't going to be really that important. We're not going to cover everything. So we're not going to sit here and talk about every little uh, bug that's been fixed, but we're going to talk about the main ones and then you'll get a little bit of a better idea on, on what this patch actually does. So anyway, let's have a look. So first things first, um, the update's apparently called the Red Ball Express. Uh, we didn't know that until now. We just thought it was update eight. That's apparently, it says here, named after the famed allied supply chain. So so there you go. Uh, update eight, the Red Ball Express. Uh, as you can see here, thousand changes in up, update eight, not just to the clients, but also to the back end, so servers and that sort of stuff. So that's interesting. Um, obviously there's been some server issues since update seven, so hopefully um, you know, that goes some way to fixing some of those performance problems and that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, let's have a bit of a look. So first things first, we've got the Hurtgen Forest Overhaul, right? So as you can see, it's been completely overhauled. There's actually, if you want to find out some more information, if you click this link here on the dev briefing, there's some information on exactly what they've done. But in a nutshell, they've added more buildings, added more fortifications. Um, they've updated Hurtgen Warfare from memory um, from playing it today. It's it's no longer as dark as it used to be. It's like a sunny sort of preset now. So that's that's kind of interesting. And they've also added in the Hurtgen German Offensive and the Hurtgen US Offensive. So, um, so that's interesting. We've got a couple of new game modes. As you can see, there's like a river running through the middle of the map now. Like I said, just generally a lot more fortifications, which, you know, obviously makes the map a lot more interesting. With that being said, though, it also makes the map perform less well so i don't know how that's going to go later on down the track obviously there's still some optimized optimization issues that need to be sorted out we'll talk about that in just a bit but um but yeah in general map looks better map probably plays better but doesn't perform as well because there's more objects now on the map for the client to try and figure out what's going on so that's that's not i would say on balance Probably 50-50. 50 50% 50, 50 good, 50% mm, not so good. Uh, anyway, all right, trucks. So this is another one of the big things um, in this update. So not only have they added in transport trucks, they've also added in supply trucks. So uh, we talked about this in the last video, but basically transport trucks are exactly what you think. Um, they transport troops to the battlefield. Uh, supply trucks can carry supply crates and they can be used to build something we'll talk about later on. There's a new fortification system in the game now. Um, so yeah, so that I, I, to be honest, I didn't really see them being used that much. And the main reason that I didn't see them being used is because they work very similar to how they work in squad. Um, essentially when you drive the truck into the battlefield, 
it stays there until it gets destroyed or you move it. Um, it it's it's not like Battlefield where your vehicle is going to um, despawn if you abandon it. Um, and that's a bit of a problem because it means that well, generally a tactic in squad is if you see an enemy logi truck, you don't actually destroy it. Uh, because then it's going to despawn and go back to the base and then they can use it again. So what I saw today uh, when I was playing it was a lot of empty trucks on the battlefield not being used. So maybe the trucks aren't as impactful as I thought they might be. However, when they do start to add more stuff to what we'll talk about in a sec, the fortification system, uh, maybe the supply trucks will have more of an impact. And I think, you know, some strategies will develop as well for how to use those transport trucks a little bit more effectively. Uh, now, also, satchel chargers, and I'll, I'll try and put a clip up if I can, up here somewhere. Um, satchel chargers are pretty interesting. Um, basically, the engineer gets the satchel charge. Not even just the engineer, a specific role called the sapper on the engineer. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Um, but yeah, basically, um, they're just a single-use big explosive. You only get one of them, and you pretty much just run up to, you know, something that you want to destroy, like a, what could be a supply truck, could be a tank. I didn't try it on a tank today, but I'm assuming it does some damage to a tank. Uh, or, you know, enemy fortifications, and you just put it down, um, and it's got either a 30 or a 60 or a 90 second timer. Um, so what that basically means is you've got to hope whatever you're trying to destroy doesn't move. So, you know, if it's a, uh, a supply truck that's been abandoned, well, firstly, you probably shouldn't destroy it anyway. But secondly, you know, you should be okay with that if no one's in it. Uh, but if you're trying to destroy a tank, you know, uh, if you put the explosive down and the tank drives off, well, it's just going to detonate. It doesn't actually stick to the vehicle. So there's a little bit of skill in being able to use them. But in general, um, probably the biggest thing I noticed about this was that it's only available to that sapper kit. And uh, we'll talk about that in a, just a little bit more. So just hold that thought. Okay. Uh, fortifications. Uh, so fortifications, uh, obviously they've already been in the game. There was things like barbed wire and sandbags, but the reality was the sandbags weren't that big, so you couldn't really crouch behind them, and the barbed wire doesn't actually do any damage to you. You just hop over it. Um, so essentially what the devs have done is added in more uh, relevant fortifications. And once again, we talked about this in the last video as well, but you can actually upgrade the fortifications. So what you're seeing here on the left is... Um, Oh, and just, <laughs> I'm sorry about all of this crap that's coming up in the middle. Uh, but yeah, essentially, um, you uh, build the basic one, and then you can upgrade that into two different types of fortification, essentially. So so yeah, basically, um, yeah, as you can see also as well, these are the German ones, and they're the American ones. You'll notice the German ones are much more kind of impactful. Uh, they're made out of concrete, and once again, there's something else we're going to talk about in just a sec that has an effect on whether or not your fortification is concrete or made out of wood. So uh, so that's, that's essentially what you're going to be using um, the supply trucks for. And apparently there's also other emplacements coming on down the track as well, like uh, presumably flak emplacements, artillery emplacements, and that sort of stuff. So pretty interesting to see. Okay, the grease gun. This is a, this is like the big thing that everyone was excited about. Um, it's not that good. It's it's basically like an American version of the uh, MP40, and the MP40 is probably one of the worst guns in the game anyway. So yeah, in a nutshell, I I, I was sort of playing with it all day, um, and yeah, look, there's not it's nothing to write home about. Um, it's more of like a trade-off weapon. You use this weapon and you get something else as a trade-off for that. Uh, and let's go back to the explosive satchel because the uh, on the American team, the actual class that gets the, um, the grease gun is actually the sapper. So what it means is if you want the explosive charge, you also have to use the grease gun, which is not one of the better guns in the game. So, so essentially, there's a trade-off there. You get a really powerful explosive, but you can't just sort of run around and delete people like you would with a Sturmgewehr. So a little bit of a balance there. Now, one thing we did think as well is we thought they would be added to vehicle crews. It doesn't look like that's happened. I had a quick look today. Um, vehicle crews haven't got the um, grease gun. That might change later on down the track. It kind of would make sense. Um, but anyway, at the moment, you can play with this gun on the sapper kit although you probably won't want to that much. Uh, just quickly, the reason why you won't want to is because it's like a three-shot kill, in even in close quarters, and it fires so slowly that a lot of the time you, you, you'll, you'll like burst at someone, land two hits, and think that you've killed them, and then they'll just like 
one shot you, you know, um, with a bolt action rifle because you thought you did enough damage to kill them, but you didn't actually do that. So, I mean, it's like anything, you know, the more you play with it, probably the better you're going to get. But, um, but yeah, at the moment, I wouldn't say this is one of the best guns in the game. All right, so this is another thing as well, and this comes back to what we were talking about before. Bullet penetration has now been added into the game as well. Fortifications, obviously, um, you know, are going to be important when it comes to bullet penetration. Uh, if you're an American and you're in your little wooden bunker, well, you're not going to be as safe from bullet penetration as you would be in a concrete bunker. So uh, once again, there's a full dev briefing on how this system works. I'm not going to go over it today, but you might want to check that out. Um, basically, in a nutshell, um, different materials withstand shots from different firearms. So uh, if you can see in this particular picture, you can sort of see, I um, can't remember what the brown ones are, but anyway, you, there's, there's, light, there's lighter materials, so like the pallets and stuff, you're going to be able to shoot through them with um, just regular guns, whereas the trees, you might need something like a, an AT round to penetrate that. Um, you're not going to be able to shoot through it with just a regular rifle. So it's not like you're going to be on Hurtgen Forest hiding behind a tree and suddenly get one-shotted by someone with a car 98. That's not going to happen. But maybe if you're in a little American bunker and someone shoots you with a tank, um, that the round might just go straight through and might kill you. So something to think about anyway. Okay, also refined hitboxes and limb damage. Now, I haven't really seen too much evidence of this. I guess it is happening. Um, but basically, in, in a nutshell... They've made it so that, you know, when you shoot someone in the leg, it doesn't necessarily one-shot them like it previously did. So that presumably will make weapons like the semi-automatic rifles less powerful and give you more of a reason to use the bolt actions. At the moment, there's this real big imbalance between uh, Americans and Germans because the German standard weapon is a Car 98 and the American standard weapon is the Garand. Um, so the issue with that is, yeah, essentially... Um, you know, both of those weapons one-shot you at any point in the body. So I think the devs are trying to work towards balancing stuff out so that there's actually a reason to use a, uh, a bolt action and you don't just want to run around with an automatic weapon all the time. So obviously that's probably going to help out the SMGs a little bit as well. Maybe guns like the M1, um, which were pre the M1 carbine, I should say, which were previously, you know, like the god guns of the game. Maybe they won't be so good anymore. All right, so also here, uh, update upgraded to uh, Unreal Engine version 4.25. I don't exactly know what that does in-game. Uh, I didn't really notice that there was an engine upgrade, but, you know, awesome. <laughs> Meta game changes. Uh, so what does it say here? Reduce the amount of garrisons from 8 to 10. Uh, hang on. What? Reduce the amount of garrisons that can be placed per team down to oh, down to eight from ten. Sorry, I read that the wrong, wrong way around. So yeah, so basically less garrisons. That's kind of cool, I suppose. Uh, less, you know, um, chances to... You know, some teams, for example, just go overboard and just literally place gar garrisons everywhere, whereas the other team might only place two or three. So maybe it might stop the steamroll a little bit. Uh, increase the distance in which garrisons can be placed next to each other. So basically, essentially just means less garrisons. Um, just means that you you have to really think about where you want to place it. Uh, resource conversion ability for the commander, that's the, the next thing. Um, that's interesting. Once again, I don't really play a lot of commander, um, but, you know, if you're a commander and you've got a lot of one particular resource, well, now you can convert that into something else. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, we're just going to go through some of these gameplay things. I actually haven't read through a lot of these things, so this is the first time I'm, I'm seeing them. Maybe I noticed them in-game, maybe I didn't. Um, so let's have a little bit of a look. So implemented ballistic system to all vehicles. Okay, yeah, they did say that was going to happen. Um, you might not have actually realized this, but up until now, ballistics have not been on vehicles. So, you know, it was laser beam uh, coax guns until now. Uh, reduce the belt size on coax and hull MGs to limit continuous spam. There you go. That's pretty good. Less, less vehicle MG spam. That's good. Implanted, implemented base roster of vehicles across all maps. Okay, um, I haven't seen that, but anyway, there we go. Okay, the Car 98's just got faster. I didn't notice that, but maybe that's another reason to use the Car 98. See, there's so many little changes in this update. You don't even realize all of them. So um, I'm actually kind of glad that I'm taking the time to actually go through um, this, this full patch notes with you guys. Okay, in introduce bullet penetration. We knew that. Slightly reduced grenade fatal explosion range to... All right, so basically, yeah. So you won't get killed by a grenade as close anymore. Um, change number of buildable resource nodes to four. Yeah, that's not that important. 
A slightly increased M1 Garand. And so the Garand and the BAR ha now have more recoil. So can you see how what I was trying, saying before? There's this imbalance of Germans and Americans. So they're trying to nerf the Americans. So that's interesting. That's really cool. So they're not only buffing Germans, but they're also, uh, you know, nerfing Americans. Uh, oh, oh yeah, blowtorch. I didn't I didn't mention this. Bl the blowtorch is a new gadget for the engineer and for vehicle crews, I think. Uh, and basically, it's it's replacing the wrench for repairs. So anytime you want to repair something, you pull out your blowtorch if your class has it, and you repair stuff. The hammer also is how you build the fortifications. So the hammer tool is um, given to different different classes. Um, it's kind of similar to squad, you know. So you know how in uh, squad, the squad leader can actually place like the fortification and everyone kind of builds it with their shovels. It's sort of similar with the hammer. Um, when you're running around in, in the game, you can see where the fortification has been placed. And there's a little green kind of outline of the fortification and then you can actually build it with your hammer. So that's interesting. It's, it's not going to be all completely done by one class. It's a, kind of a team effort now. Um, all right, a couple more to go. Wrench functions. Um, yeah, so the wrench is now uh, a placing tool. Uh, and like I said, you know, the hammer is the, the building tool. Handheld supply boxes, kind of like Battlefield. That's pretty cool. Uh, three types of ammunition box. I, did, I haven't seen that, but there you go. So we talked about the satchel charge. We talked about the grease gun. Uh, added first round of destruction to player deployed objects. Ah, yeah, of course, you know, because the... Um, there's no destruction in the game order, you know, at the moment. So, um, so yeah, obviously, if you're going to build fortifications and you've got a satchel charge, you want to be able to blow them up. So maybe more stuff is going to be destructible down the track. Who knows? Um, okay, we're going to just skip everything that says fixed. Work to better define when a player takes damage. Uh, a screen, yeah, I haven't really seen that. Um, so I guess you'd know where you're being shot from now better. Okay, I'm just going to quickly scan these uh, and we'll talk about the important ones. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We now re reward all vehicle occupants when a vehicle gets a kill. Look at that. That's how good's that? You know, so you'll actually get kills if you're the driver. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. It means you get more points for it as well. So that's really cool. Um, okay. Uh, all actions in the game now reward experience. So so this is something the devs talked about in the last dev briefing as well. Um, basically, they want to give you the ability to, um, uh, you know, gain experience by doing stuff like doing Lodgy runs. You know, they don't want to just make it so that people just constantly just try and farm kills to, to rank up. Because some people are like that. Some people just only do things if they get experience for it. So if you're someone, maybe you're not such a good frontline player. Maybe you just want to jump in and play with your mates and you don't really know what to do in the game. So you can just run supplies all game. I don't, I don't, that's not something that I would do, but, you know, at least you can actually get experience from that now. Um, okay, you gotta you got to reach career rank 10 to get commander. That's, that's a good thing. Insurgency did something like that recently as well. Um, okay, so you can put a clan tag. There's clan tags now. That's good if you're in someone that's in a clan. Uh, players now face the objective whenever they spawn. I guess that makes sense. You know, if there's if there's other enemy players in the objective and you spawn in, then you, you face that direction, so you're not going to get shot in the back instantly. So that's that's good. All right, and um, just a couple more to go. Uh, now. Enable players to see the map when they're critically wounded and down. Yeah, yeah, that's that's you. You might notice that um, in some of the gameplay. I'm not sure what gameplay I'm going to include in this video, but that's a, that's a thing now. You can actually see what's going on. It doesn't just go to a black screen anymore. Um, so the puma and the greyhounds turning circle has been increased. So that means the puma and the greyhound have got nerfed. So it takes longer to turn around. Um, Stronger vehicle anti-flip mechanics. Uh, so I guess that just, you know, makes it less likely you're going to flip your vehicle. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And cap total number of infantry units to 18. Um, okay, yeah, so that's good as well. So you can't you can't have, like, 18 um, solo infantry squads, which I guess is a good idea because that was sort of something I saw a lot today as well. People locking their, their, um, their squads. 
So there you go. Uh, now, uh, there was also something that came out as well. Um, so basically, you know, there's a bunch of changes to team killing. Um, also, there's there's now like a vote kicking thing. Um, the you know, Essentially, previously, you might remember vote kicking didn't really work. You know, whenever someone voted to, to vote kick, no one would ever actually you know, vote that person out. So essentially, if, I, I won't go into that because it's a bit boring, but essentially they've improved vote kicking. Um, and also, um, yeah, you, you can see here, road testing 50% friendly bullet damage. So basically it just means that it's it's similar to insurgency. Uh, there's friendly fire, but it's not full damage. So you're not going to one shot someone uh, on your team. So you can kind of get it you have a chance for them to say, you know, stop shooting me sort of thing. So I did notice that a couple of times today, which was really interesting. Uh, and this is really important as well. So the performance stuff is the stuff I was most, um, you know, sort of looking forward to. Obviously, Update 7 broke the game um, pretty royally and added, added in a lot of performance issues. Um, so the first thing I did was I tried to optimize all my settings when I started playing the game. I turned a lot of my graphics down. Um, the textures were still pretty high, but things like shadows and that sort of stuff, I wanted them to be on max, just to, sorry, on, on minimum, sorry, just so that I could see if the performance was uh, markedly improved. And um, it was, I think. So I just, the first game I played was Carantan, where I'm used to having big, serious drops all the time. And um, there were still drops, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad. So uh, that's because they improved grass in this one, uh, in this update. So grass apparently is a huge performance hit. Um, but the big issue is still, I think, that maps like Carantan and St. Mary Glees, they've still got a lot of, like, buildings and that sort of stuff that all need to be, you know, the textures all need to be uh, drawn by the client's machine. They reckon there's over a million objects on Carantan um, and 80,000 at any one point in time could be drawn by your computer. So that's that's the issue with Carantan. There's just too much crap on it, essentially. So, um, yeah, anyway... It's a little bit better, but still problematic. Also, there's a low shadow setting, which I used today. Uh, didn't really look that much difference. And um, yeah, apparently increases performance. So seemed to maybe that could have been what the change was today. Um, and as you can see here, you know, uh, many smaller net code CPU and GPU optimization. So let's just say on that last point, well, this will be the last point to finish up. Um, still performing not acceptably but it's a lot better than uh, update seven. So let's just say update eight added a bunch of stuff, changed a bunch of, bunch of stuff, fixed, look, check this out, fixed all of this stuff, but it didn't break the game, thank, thankfully. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot, just before we forget. Um, they changed the, the a lot of the sounds and the uh, I think there was also, like they changed some of the effects for the explosions. So check, uh, lis listen for that as well. You'll just notice there's explosions going off everywhere now and they're all uh um kind of uh dependent on where where they are in the 3d world um so yeah everything sounds a lot better in general when it comes to explosions um but yeah like i said they've added a bunch of stuff changed a bunch of stuff fixed a bunch of stuff but they haven't broken the game like they did with the update so all in all pretty good um now obviously as you can see there are so many things so many things um loadouts in particular you might want to check out some of the new loadouts uh, customization added a bunch of that sort of stuff. Well, what have I done? Um, so there's so many things, and you know, I don't, I don't want to sit here and bore you guys to death going through all of the tiny little things. Uh, so check them out if you want, if you want some more info. But in general, a massive update. It's going to seriously change the game. Maybe not as much as we first thought, but uh, definitely a good update and definitely a positive thing for the game. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate um, you taking the time to watch the video. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you check out the links if you want to watch any more of these videos. And as always, until next time, see you later and have a good one.